In this lesson, I'm going to cover the settings that you need to configure on your customer's firewall in order for the PBX appliance to work properly. I'm going to cover these settings using a Linksys router slash firewall, but this could be applied to a D-Link or a Netgear device just as well. Uh, the settings and the terminology are almost identical. So the first setting that we need to review is the SIP ALG setting. It is very important that this setting is disabled both on the customer's modem and the customer's router. So to dig in a little bit, uh, we'll have to go to the administration tab. And then once you get to the administration tab, the sub menu of management needs to be selected. And within there, you can see below in the advanced features, there's a setting for SIP ALG and the setting for SIP ALG needs to be disabled as it is shown in this presentation. The next settings that we'll need to adjust are the port forwarding settings. So we have a, a wide list here that we need to do. Uh, we need to forward port 5060 UDP to the PBX appliance and that's going to be for all of our SIP traffic uh, which is basically the signaling for the voice over IP. And then we need to forward the port range of 10,000 through 20,000 UDP. And those are our media ports or the audio stream that's coming through for that phone call. And then we have a couple of remote management ports. Uh, I would certainly recommend opening the remote web management, which is gonna be HTTPS. Uh, that's port 443 and that's TCP. And again, we're pointing that at the PBX appliance. And then if you're a more advanced user, uh, somebody who's familiar with the SSH interface, you could also forward the SSH port. Uh, but I, that's completely optional, and I wouldn't recommend it unless you know what that is. Um, but the web management should certainly be enough for any novice or beginner. So let's look at how we do this. Uh, so here's the Linksys port forwarding screen, and this is for a single port. So we'll take a look at the SIP port as an example. You'll click on the Applications and Gaming tab, and then that single port forwarding uh, option we'll see in front of us. As you can see in the example, I've created a, a port for SIP to forward to my PBX appliance. Now let's zoom in a little bit more. And you can see that I named it SIP. We did external port as 5060, internal port 5060, and then the protocol is UDP. And the IP address that it's pointing at is gonna be the IP address of my PBX appliance. So in this example, my PBX appliance is gonna have an IP address or a static IP address of 192.168.1.212. In your environment, that's likely going to be different. Now, this screen would also be used for your HTTPS forwarding. So in the line below, you might enter web management as the name. External port will be 443. Internal port will be 443. The protocol will be TCP. And then we'll have that same IP address of the .212 and then enable that. So moving on uh, to the next uh, port range that we need to do for the SIP uh, or the voice over IP audio stream for the, the audio of the call, uh, we're gonna go to port forwarding range. And you can see it's right next to where single port forwarding is. It's port range forwarding. And there's a couple of ways of doing this. You, you could also enter your SIP port in here but I would not recommend it. On some of these Linksys devices, it does combine everything into a single port forwarding screen instead of having it separ separated for a single port versus a port range. So depending on what device you're using, these screens uh, might be merged together or they might be separated. If they're separated, take advantage of that. If they're all together, uh, this is how you're gonna do it. So let's take a deeper dive into this. And you can see I, I did the example of SIP 
just so you would know how to do that in the event that the Linksys device you're using does not have the option for a single port forward. Uh, for the media, we entered in the label of media. I entered my start port of 10,000, the end port of 20,000, and the protocol is, T, uh, is UDP. And then again, the IP address that we're forwarding it to is the PBX appliance. So in this example, that appliance is at 212. And obviously enable that with the checkbox and then make sure to save your settings. So uh, that's as easy as it is. Once you set up that static IP address on your PBX appliance, you can come in and do the port forwarding to force all that traffic to go to that static IP address that you've created for your PBX appliance.